Good evening, everyone. It's really a personal privilege as well as an honor to be here with each and every one of you. When I didn't see the U.S. in the first presentation, I thought I might have to get up here and say, Roshana Tanaho, or words to that effect. Uh, but wasn't that beautiful from East Tex the Texas uh, University? Very beautiful. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for the invitation to be here this evening and an honor to be here with the Mr. Minister, um, my friend, as when he was former ambassador, I learned a lot from him. And uh, congratulations to you on your new position. And I'm, as was mentioned by the ambassador earlier, our support in Congress has always been bipartisan. So I'm so honored that the former chair of the, Armed, the Foreign Affairs Committee, Ed Royce, is here. <laughs> Chairwoman Ileana Ross Layton of Florida former chair, and from uh, New York, Joe Crowley, my, Joe Crowley, whom I had the honor of traveling with, with President Obama uh, to India. We were there for Republic Day. Uh, it was a fabulous trip and a lot of yoga, not, <laughs> but in the parade. Any other members here that I haven't seen, please wave. We are out of session, uh, but we're not without of admiration uh, for India and the important occasion this is, and an honor for us to have it at the Library of Congress. The um, distinguished service of the minister and the ambassador uh, make it easy for us to learn so more every day. It's a pleasure to be with all of you as we observe the 150th birthday of Mahatma Gandhi at the same time as we observe the 90th birthday of someone who learned so much from him from a distance the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. These legacies of these two extraordinary men may have forever shaped our nations and changed the course of history in both of our countries and indeed in the world. The relationship between the United States and India is a shining example of mutual cooperation, prosperity and peace and respect. As the world's largest democracies, yours the largest, ours the oldest, uh, we have been partners in the fight to expand justice and ensure the blessings of liberty for all. In America, generations of Americans of Indian descent have enriched our communities, our democracy, with their beautiful culture and rich traditions, not to mention their entrepreneurship uh, fueling our economy. Our, caucus, our government has been strengthened by the leadership of Indian American members of Congress, Senator Kamala Harris, Representative Ami Bera, who was on our trip with President uh, Obama, uh, Representative Pramila Jayapal, Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, who was lead author on one of those resolutions, and Representative Ro Khanna. About Ro Khanna, I could talk about all of them, but let, Ro particularly wanted you to know this story. Ro Khanna's grandfather, uh, whose last name is Amaranth Nath, Vid Yakankar, probably, okay, was a champion for freedom who spent years in prison alongside Gandhi in the quest for Indian independence. Today, Rep. Khanna proudly honors his family's legacy of service and sacrifice in his, in his work and leadership to build a better future for all. But his connection is a direct one to Mahatma Gandhi. As members of Congress, we have been privileged to lead official visits, gone on official visits to India, meet with leaders and exchange with citizens to strengthen the bonds of our friendship between our leadership, but also among our people. Seeing the joy and vibrancy of the Indian people, especially the children, has always been an inspiration. Our 2017 trip was critical to advancing strong economic ties, reaffirming our shared commitment to tackling the climate crisis and securing peace in the region and around the world. And in New Delhi in 2008 was an honor to place a wreath at the Raj Ghat Memorial located at the site of the Gandhi cremation. Gandhi's story of peaceful struggle to free the people of India had a meaningful impact on the lives of many Americans. For me, as the ambassador and the minister, know and have referenced, this is very personal for me. I have always, since my childhood, carried India in my heart, largely because of Mahatma Gandhi. When I was a little girl, <laughs> the 
this is a very dignified occasion, but I'll tell you about it when I was a little girl. I went into school one day and I had on a hat and the, one of the big tall nuns, I was a little girl, said, who do you think you are, Mahatma Gandhi with that hat? Well, I didn't know who Mahatma Gandhi was, but I wasn't going to let on to her that I did not know. So I immediately went to the library after school. And at, and at that time, even that was like in the 50s, the library had books on Mahatma Gandhi for children already. Already had books for children. So that's when I started absorbing everything I could and more, um, shall we say, uh, uh, bigger books, uh, smaller print as I got older. And people would always say, we always know you'll have every book out of the library on Gandhi. Such an inspiration. But it is um, around that same time, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, whose birthday we celebrate, 90th today, and Coretta Scott visited, visited India. And how much we draw upon India and who we are. As you probably know, and I say it again, probably mispronouncing, satyagraha, uh, that word, has two meanings in Sanskrit. Nonviolence and insistence on the truth. And isn't that exactly what Gandhi took from India? Nonviolent insisting on the truth, learning from the experience and the depth of strength of that message. Not just the example, the strength of that message of Mahatma Gandhi. And of course, it made all the difference in the world, in our country. So that is a debt that we owe to India for that inspiration, more than an inspiration, that strength of, of message uh, to make a difference in our own country. Though he knew it would mean sacrifice and struggle, Dr. King would insist on the truth in the heart of our nation. They're all, that we're all created equal, and that to do so, insisting on the truth nonviolently. Dr. King insisted on the truth at lunch counters, marches, and like Gandhi, from jailhouse cells. He insisted on the truth of his dream of equality and opportunity for all, regardless of race, gender, or creed. As we face the great uh, injustices of war, inequality, oppression, and tyranny, we all have an obligation to continue to answer Dr. King and Gandhi's insistence on the truth, nonviolently, with action. We are called to act to give voice to millions of refugees fleeing violence and natural disaster and ensure that we honor the dignity and worth of every person, man, woman, and child. I'm especially grateful, as I have expressed to uh, Prime Ministers, uh, Prime Minister Modi as well, Mr. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Minister, when he was ambassador, uh, how much we all, so many of us appreciate the hospitality that India extends to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And when I've mentioned, <laughs> when we mentioned that to the Prime Minister and the previous Prime Minister, they've always said, no need to thank us, that's who we are that beautiful, beautiful respect for the dignity and worth of every person. The minister and the ambassador, the minister especially, talked about the climate crisis and the commitment that the Prime Minister Modi has to that. And I was there in Paris and saw that agreement come together. And you will agree, Mr. Minister, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but it was done. And, he, and when the Prime Minister came to Congress for joint session of Congress. The ambassador was there when we met with him, the leadership met with him before the speech. And I m mentioned about climate crisis and that, and thank you for your leadership. He talked about Mahatma Gandhi and the environment. Remember? He told us about whether it was water or conservation or whatever it is, Gandhi understood the worth, the respect we had to have for nature all that long time ago. Uh, so as you have said, both of you so brilliantly, what would Gandhi do now? Pretty, uh, He would be a leader in this important challenge uh, to God's creation, uh, our planet. Uh, we're called to fight this fight, which is the existential threat of our time, really, uh, jeopardizing health, security, and future of our children and our grandchildren. We're called to act and stand firm against malign actors seeking to destabilize our democracy and our free and fair elections. 
At the same time, of, uh, with a, this time of challenge and opportunity, we must act drawing the strength and inspiration for Dr. King and Gandhi's example. Just as the torch passed from Gandhi to Dr. King, the torch now belongs to all of us. 150 years after Gandhi's birth and 90 years after Dr. King was born, we must now pass the torch to millions of young uh, and courageous people across the globe who are blazing a trail toward a more just and equal world for all. It is our responsibility to support them and empower them in this critical mission to build a future worthy of Dr. King worthy of the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi. So it is uh, for our colleagues, and I know I speak in a bipartisan way for our colleagues, House and Senate, who aren't here because we're out of session, uh, that uh, observing Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birthday at the same time as we observe Martin Luther King's birthday on the campus of the US Capitol is for us a thrilling experience. We're out of session, but I told the ambassador when he told me about this, no matter where I am, no matter what it, when it is, uh, because of that little girl in that school uh, learning about Mahatma Gandhi, it will be a, a thrill of my life to be there uh, to honor the memory and the legacy, the leadership, the strength, the inspiration of Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you all very much for giving me this program.